Welcome to Worship Moment from the First Presbyterian Church of Battle Creek. Christ is our living rock. Let us worship the cornerstone of our faith. Christ is our living rock. Let us pray. God of refuge and strength, during this Easter season, as we abide in the assurance of your care, help us move beyond the comforting promise of eternal life in your heavenly dwelling place to embrace a deeper hunger and a longing to grow into a spiritual house during our lives here on earth. In the name of the master builder and the living stone, the one who builds us into a spiritual house. Amen. Hello, church family. Welcome. It's time to worship God and sing together. We're in our Glory to God hymnal, hymn number 463. How firm a foundation. If you have the blue hymnal, it is also hymn number 361. Please sing it with me. We're going to do verses 1, 2, and 5. pray for all those in need. Bend down and lift the cares from their hearts. Lift the grieving into your arms of constant care. Hold the sick and dying with patient compassion. Strengthen our resolve to see that the hungry are fed and the homeless find shelter. Make provision for those who are struggling financially and watch over all who are on the front lines of dealing with this pandemic. Lord, we thank you that our mothers have often been mirrors of your love. They tie our shoes, help us with our online schooling, put a band-aid on our knee, braid our hair, bake us cookies, help us to pick up our room, send us thoughtful messages, say a prayer for us, and laugh at our jokes. For the ordinary ways and countless days of care our mothers gave us, we give thanks. For the worry we caused them, we ask forgiveness. For our place in this family of God, we rejoice through Jesus, whom Mary loved. And so we pray as disciples are taught saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Reading from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying a, in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they are destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. In order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's only been a few weeks since we celebrated Easter, that the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Sin and death were overcome, are overcome, by God's power shown in the resurrection, and the stone was gone. Reading the text from 1 Peter made me wonder, with all the different references, where's the stone now? Is it in your way, blocking your path? Is it something, something to stumble over? The stone that was rolled away from Christ's tomb, as mentioned in our Gospels, is a tangible symbol of the power of the res resurrection. People who are not able to believe with faith literally stumble over that stone, that Jesus is alive after being dead. For some, that's too hard. It's too absurd to base their life on. And even we who do believe in the power of Christ's resurrection, we are still prone to stumble. It's okay to stumble. I miss having our full liturgy with the usual unison, confession and pardon and assurance. It's especially the part of our loving God that forgives what we have done and what we have left undone. Even with extra time right now, I feel like I'm leaving much too much undone. And we are forgiven by the mercy of God. So where's the stone now? The stone that the builder rejected, that's a metaphor for the way that Jesus was rejected. Is the stone your cornerstone? Is the resurrection your foundation? The rock of trusting in the Lord to never forsake you or leave you, even like now when the world is uncertain? Does the rock help align everything in your life? Note well, it says that the foundation and the building is not of our placing. The text is written in a passive tone, let yourself be built. Let God work with the raw material that's you calling you out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. It's not our strength or our light, it's God's. And we are God's handiwork and the raw material that God works with. There's so much to be said about being built by God's strength and hand. In Greek as in in English, the uh, words rock and stone are fairly interchangeable. My nephew, with his geology degree, gave me the 101. A rock is generally the basic natural item, and a stone is a rock that 
has a purpose, is changed or act, acted upon. So we see rocks, but we throw stones. We can cut stones to build with. And we use stones for foundations. And we are living stones shaped for God's purposes, even when we can't see the purpose or can't see our future like right now. So where's the stone now? There's another metaphor besides the rock being our foundation. God, the rock is also the capstone or the keystone, those supporting blocks above all the others. Picture an arch with a central stone that sets the shape and strength of all that is being built below. Right now, there's a lot of things to lean on, to build off from advice to advance upon is the rock that is Jesus resurrection the head over all well, where's the stone is it in the way to stumble over is it the sure foundation is it above all sometimes we stumble sometimes we are held up sometimes we let Christ be the head over everything in our life so we are grateful and we know that the stone that was rejected and crucified can't be kept behind a stone. And there's one more thing. Note in verse 10. You have received mercy. We are God's people. The good news is the mercy that we receive. That God loves you as you stumble, when you're standing firm, and when... You are letting him be Lord over all. God wants to be Lord over all. So we give God the glory and recognize that the holy power is holding everything together. So the, to the one who is able to keep you from stumbling belong the glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now, and forever. Amen.